Hi everyone. So in this video, I would like to uh, go over the uh, blood tests. So in these uh, videos uh, that aren't super chemistry related, we are trying to in, um, include some of the chemistry and we'll do that here as well. Uh, but there isn't going to be a ton of details here and most of what's here uh, is just read out of the lab manual. That being said, uh, we're going to go through a few different blood tests, uh, a few different tests that can be used to detect blood. And then we'll talk about how you're actually going to apply these tests in the actual lab very briefly. So the first thing is um, the catalase test uh, using hydrogen peroxide. So if you've ever uh, had a cut or whatever and you put hydrogen peroxide on yourself, you'll notice that it instantly fizzes. And what's happening is um, the hydrogen peroxide is actually breaking down to water and that should be oxygen, not hydrogen. Okay, so it should be O2. So it's actually giving off um, oxygen gas. And the reason this happens is you have an enzyme in your body called catalase, and this decomposes hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is not good for you. Um, so it's kind of your body's defense mechanism against hydrogen peroxide. Well, the other thing I should point out is hydrogen peroxide also isn't good for bacteria and things that um, like that that might give you an infection. So uh, that's why you would use it if you have a cut, you know, to prevent an infection. So I'm not saying you shouldn't use hydrogen peroxide or anything like that. I'm just saying that um, it is kind of your body's natural defect defense mechanism against hydrogen peroxide. And again, that should be O2, not H2. So this can be used for test to test for blood. So for example, if there's a blood stain and there's some catalase present in the blood, then you put hydrogen peroxide on it and it bubbles. One downside of this is it does work with um, um, it, it does, there are some plants and other bacteria that produce uh, catalases, so therefore they um, will also test positive. In fact, in a microbiology course, this could be a test that was used to determine whether or not a bacteria produced um, this catalase enzyme. And the other uh, downside of this is it only works at relatively high concentration. So the next test we're going to talk about is the uh, KM test. And the KM test actually involves using um, phenolphthalein. And essentially what can happen is this uh, phenolphthalein can be uh, basically colorless. And then with hydrogen peroxide oxidation, it could turn into this uh, pink color. So this works very similar to, you know, phenolphthalein used in an acid-based titration that you may have done in general chemistry, uh, where the color turns pink when the pH becomes basic. However, in this case, it's not you being done using um, a base, but it's actually being done using uh, the hemoglobin in the blood. So there's kind of two ways that this can be used. The first way is the sensitive test. So you combine the hydrogen peroxide and the hemoglobin, um, the hydrogen peroxide and the hemoglobin and the phenolphthalein all at the same time. Okay, so this should say uh, phenolphthalein instead of hemoglobin. So we combine the hydrogen peroxide and the phenolphthalein first, and then we add it into the blood, and we can detect down to about 10 ppm uh, blood and water. So that's a pretty sensitive test. The downside of this is, and this you would know from um, general chemistry, if you combine the phenolphthalein to a base, it's going to turn pink independent of the blood. So if there's any alkaline material in the system for whatever reason, um, then basically the phenolphthalein is going to turn pink because of that and not because blood is present. So therefore you can get a false positive. The second is a more selective test. You add the phenolphthalein and then the hydrogen peroxide. And the advantage of doing it this way is sorry, um, that you can basically detect whether the solution is basic um, first. So if you add the phenolphthalein and there's, for whatever reason, some base present, it'll turn pink. If it doesn't turn pink, and then you add the hydrogen peroxide and then it turns pink, then there's a better chance that it was the blood being present um, that caused it to turn pink and not just being a base. So it is more selective in this way. So this is basically two different ways in order to use um, the KM test. The KM test is fairly commonly used um, in the actual field, so this is a, um, a good way to test for blood using phenolphthalein and hydrogen peroxide. Uh, the next test that we're going to talk about is the uh, TMB test, and this can detect down even more sensitive, about 10 times more sensitive than the KM test, which is down to about 1 ppm. And depending on the concentration, um, you can see uh, basically an orange or a green 
or even a blue color at very high blood concentrations. So this is um, probably a better test. It's more selective than the KM test. It's also more sensitive than the KM test. Um, the disadvantage is the common disadvantage. It costs more. So, um, you know, in the lab manual it says well-funded uh, places will use this test and the KM test using phenolphthalein, which is relatively inexpensive and use it at very low concentrations. So in that sense, it's very inexpensive, um, maybe a little bit um, cheaper. So this is uh, another test um, that can also detect um, the, um, that can detect blood. And the last one, arguably the most famous one, is luminol. So this is a chemical, luminol, that when um, reacted with the blood um, can actually form a luminescent compound. And a luminescent compound is a compound that gives off light without heating. So essentially, uh, you spray this on, you turn down the lights, and you see this blue glow. And that's, um, you know, uh, you know, the one you see in crime shows and things like this. And this luminol test can possibly detect down to one part per billion, which is an incredibly sensitive test. Now, it may not be quite that sensitive, but it is um, a very sensitive test. Unfortunately, there are even some false positives with this luminol um, because it can, uh, if there's bleach, uh, present, uh, metals including copper, food items, and other bodily fluids can all cause a positive test here. And bleach becomes, you know, kind of an issue. So imagine a situation, it's a kind of a gruesome situation, where somebody is trying to clean up a crime scene. Well, bleach might be a good thing to clean up a crime scene. And if they put bleach everywhere, then the luminol might be luminescing, because of the bleach and not because of the actual blood stain. Um, of course, uh, you know, going with all of this in mind, these being kind of preliminary tests to see if there's blood present, of course, DNA testing can be done. And DNA testing is something that's outside of the scope of um, this chemistry class, but DNA testing can be pretty darn confirmatory of whether or not that's human blood that is present. The other thing that is over, uh, overwhelming all of these things is that it doesn't necessarily have to be human blood. And some of the work in this department, I believe, um, is looking at how to detect different types of blood, whether the blood, blood came from a human, a dog, a cat, something like that, without having to go to DNA testing. So a, a more um, preliminary test that's actually more uh, confirmatory as well. So basically these tests can be used to detect the presence of blood and then DNA testing might be done uh, to confirm that it's a human being's blood or blood at all. And like in this case where you have the bleach present, okay, in the cleanup example, um, that may be a problem. So you are going to use each of these tests that we just talked about to test several things. So you're gonna, the first four parts are essentially the same thing, but we're going to test things, you're going to test things like red ink, crushed tomatoes, cooked tomato sauce, red food coloring, crushed beets, and synthetic blood with the catalase test, the KM test, the TMB test, and the luminol test. So the four parts are to test each of these things. And what we're looking at here is essentially whether or not the, um, different types of things such as crushed tomatoes maybe give a false positive. So maybe crushed tomatoes have catalase, okay, um, or maybe they have um, some hemoglobin in them or something that is able to test positive for this KM test, so on and so forth. So you're going to see the selectivity of these different tests by looking at different types of things that might logically be thought to be blood. Okay, so obviously if you see some um, stain on the floor and it's not blood colored, all right, then you're probably not going to think that it's blood. But all these things could theoretically look like blood if they created a stain on a carpet or something like that. But we'll see how they, you'll see how they test out. The next thing you're going to do is a sensitivity test. And here you're going to do the combined KM method. That's where you mix the phenolphthalein and the hydrogen peroxide directly. The sequential KM method, that's where you put the phenolphthalein in first and the hydrogen peroxide in um, second. And the TMB method to test um, different concentrations of um, blood and water. So the first you're going to do is one in 10, probably you're going to have to do first, where you could take 50 microliters of the blood sample and mix it with 450 microliters of um, water. And basically you're going to use um, 
Eppendorf by pets to do this. So uh, you can ask your TA for a little bit of uh, training on that, but you're going to use uh, the Eppendorf pipettes to do this. Then you're going to do a serial dilution. So if you take 50 microliters of the one in 10, add 450 microliters of water, 500 total. So now it's uh, one in 100. Repeat, it's one in 1,000. Repeat, it's one in 10,000. And you can repeat all the way until it's one in 10 million. Note that you're going to do this in like a well plate, okay? Um, so you can test the, uh, the different methods. Also note that you're going to need three sets of these because you're going to um, try three different methods of testing. You can't do that all on the same sample. So you're going to have all these wells and you're going to have all these different concentrations and then you're going to test to see when they test positive. And what you might find is some tests are more sensitive than others, okay? And then you can discuss um, the sensitivity of those different tests. And then finally, um, you're going to do blood stained on washed clothing. And you're going to use the methods of the lab to test the blood on uh, clothing that has been washed to see if it's still possible to detect blood. Note that these sensitivity tests play a role here, right? The more sensitive the test, the more likely it would be to uh, detect blood on the washed clothing, because in theory, some of the blood has been washed away, but not all of it. So I hope you found this uh, video helpful, and I hope it gives you a, a good idea of what you're doing in the lab. I will point out for a uh, obvious safety reasons. We are not using any kind of real blood um, in this lab uh, because we don't want anybody to get you know sick and there's infectious disease types of uh, issues with that kind of thing. So we are using synthetic blood here. That being said, still be careful um, as you're working with these different chemicals. And thank you very much uh, for watching the video.